if there's one thing you need to know about me, I really like Among Us. Which has led me to create things like this, this, and this. Now, of course, Among Us may be within my bloodstream, but I have a little bit of a secret. I actually suck at the game. So here's how it works. You have crewmates and imposters, and the imposter's goal is to kill all the crewmates, whereas the crewmate's goal is to do all their tasks. In between, you can have emergency meetings, discuss, and try to kick people out. And so, to finally figure out why I suck at being the imposter, I wanted to ask, can imposters be recognized by their game history or successes in previous roles? And can we predict whether a user will be a good imposter or not? Today we'll be doing this by building a logistic regression model from scratch, step by step. I first began with a training and testing data set from Meg Rizdal's Among Us Gameplay Kaggle website. Second was a user data set to later predict on, which was by Ruchi Bhatia, also on Kaggle. Both of these are linked in the description below. Now, the training and testing data set has a lot of information from about 108 Twitch streamers and their individual games. I'm focusing specifically on this sheet, which includes information like crew wins, crew losses, um, imposter games, imposter wins, etc. for all of these different Twitch streamers. This gave me a huge data set and a lot of features to test on. The next step is to build our logistic regression model. Step one, clean and sort the data. I began by importing packages like pandas and matplotlib, which include the data frame object and plotting respectively. I began by reading the CSV file containing the Twitch streamer data, which is our training data set. Let's see what kind of features this data set contains. Turns out there is a lot of different features but only some are actually compatible with our second user data set. And so I selected the features that match both. But what defines a good imposter, which is what we want to predict? Well, I thought that it would be defined by the imposter win rate and kill efficiency. I described this in the code by describing the imposter win rate as wins as imposter over the games as imposter, the kill efficiency as the number of kills over the games as imposter, and then combine the two to describe an imposter score equally weighted between the two factors. I then described a cutoff that would determine whether someone is a good imposter or not. I then created a new column called good imposter, which holds one if a user is good or zero if they're unskilled. Logistic regression is able to predict binary data or zeros and ones. Here are the top 20 imposters ranked by their not binary imposter scores. The horizontal line marks the cutoff for being a good imposter, so the top 20 imposters would score within that threshold. I convert the data into zeros and ones for a logistic regression model, but you can explore more machine learning algorithms in scikit-learn or try your own. A logistic regression model measures how much each feature of the training data impacts the label, or whether a user is a good imposter or not. Before we dive into building and training our model, let's take a quick crash course on how it works. A logistic regression model takes in several features to show how much each feature impacts the final decision, or whether somebody is a good imposter or not. Mathematically, we can call our features x1, x2, and x3, and multiply each feature by a corresponding weight, theta1, theta2, and theta3, and then sum them up to get a score. This score is plugged into a special function called the sigmoid function that squashes the result into a value between 0 and 1, representing the probability that someone is a good imposter. To make the best predictions, we need to adjust those weights, theta1, theta2, etc., so that they most accurately reflect the data. And this is where gradient descent comes in. Gradient descent is a method used to find the best weights for a logistic regression model. It starts with random weights and adjusts them step by step to minimize the error between the predicted and actual outcomes. Each step is guided by the gradient, which indicates the direction of the steepest decrease in error. By moving in the direction of the gradient, we can gradually find the best set of weights that result in the most accurate predictions. Graphically, we can see this on the sigmoid function, an S-shaped curve that maps any input x value to an output that's between 0 and 1. This is because probabilities are between 0 and 1. Let's say the model initially predicts a 0.9 chance of being a good imposter for the green dot, but the actual data shows that the user is a good imposter, so the actual value is 1. Gradient descent would calculate the difference between the predicted value of 0.9 and the actual value of 1 then adjust the weights to reduce this error as much as possible. For a logistic regression model, our output is binary data, so the points on the graph move towards the extremes of 0 or 1. 
As gradient descent fine-tunes the weights, it pushes the points closer to these extremes, indicating more accurate and clear decisions. So here is the training function. This is a lot of code, so feel free to pause and look through it if you'd like. But to summarize, here's what's going on. First, I begin by initializing the weights of the model to zero. This means that, at the beginning, the model has no idea how much each feature should influence the prediction. I then perform the gradient descent process a certain number of times specified by the step count. Each repetition helps improve the model by adjusting the weights. Before I start processing every data point, we reset the gradient to zero, and these gradients will hold the little changes we need to make to the weights during every step. I then iterate through every training sample. For each sample, we get the actual label Y, whether the user is a good imposter or not, and the input features X, such as the number of kills, losses, crewmate games, etc. For each feature in the dataset, we calculate the gradient. This gradient represents how much we need to adjust the weight of that feature to improve our model's predictions. You might see this exponential dot product formula here. That's our way of measuring the difference between the predicted and actual outcomes. After calculating these gradients for all of the features, we then update the weights. The weights are adjusted in the direction of the gradient, with a step size determined by n, which here is the learning rate. And after completing all of the iterations, we return the updated most accurate weights, which are optimized to best predict the outcome of whether someone is a good imposter or not. After training the model, we get these sets of weights, where a higher positive or negative value indicates that that feature has a stronger influence on the prediction. But how do we know if these weights actually would lead to accurate predictions? This brings us to our next step, where we need to test the accuracy of our trained model using the weights we've obtained. First, we define a predict function that uses the trained weights to make predictions for new given data. Here's how it works. We multiply each input feature by its corresponding weight calculated by the training function. We then sum these values all together to get a score, which is passed through the sigmoid function to calculate a probability. If this probability is greater than 0.5, we predict a label of 1 the user is a good imposter. If it's less than 0.5, we predict zero, not a good imposter. But the predict function only does that for one data point. We then have to define a test function, which iterates through every single one of our test data points. For each sample, we extract the input features and the actual label. We then call the predict function and compare the predicted label to the actual label and keep track of how many predictions are correct. We calculate the model's accuracy by dividing the number of correct predictions by the total number of test samples. It is the moment of truth. I first split the data set into train and test portions and found that the accuracy was one? No way! Well, of course, I also skipped that I had to find rough calculations for the best step count at the learning rate, and I also tried different splits for training and testing to make sure I wasn't overfitting. Now we're on to our final step. Let's run predictions on the new user data. But here's the catch. The features in this data set were a little different from the ones in the first Kaggle data set. But I realized I could calculate the needed features by doing some basic spreadsheet math. So instead of doing it manually, I actually coded up the calculations to automate the process. Now, after pre-processing, I ended up with a clean data set with features for 28 new users. And here's what I got. This plot shows the predictions for each user in the second data set, whether they're likely to be a good imposter or not. For example, user 1 is probably a good imposter, whereas user 2 is not. You can actually go into the model and extract the probabilities themselves too. What's cool is that you could use this model with your own game data. Maybe you could predict which areas of your playstyle make you the ultimate imposter. Or in my case, which areas make me the worst imposter. But why stop there? You could extend this logistic regression approach to other binary data. For example, you could explore how factors like the player's gender might influence if they're sus, or even predict whether a game ends in a win or a loss. Sure, it would require more data collection, but we went through all of the model construction in this video. So that's it, a step-by-step -step guide to building your own logistic regression model from scratch. 
I hope this was informative and also mildly entertaining because it certainly was for me too. All the data sets are linked in the description if you'd like to build models of your own. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to start my Among Us training arc. Bye bye!